Throughout our facilities, Old Castle Material operates many different types of equipment and machinery. While this equipment allows us to perform many different jobs and functions, the movement of it creates hazards to the people working on or near it. By properly guarding our equipment and machinery, we can significantly reduce the risk of accidents. Over the last nine years, 7% of the fatalities and 7% of the serious accidents in CRH have been from the lack of machine guarding. The results of an accident from no guarding is very severe. We must make sure all of our moving equipment is properly guarded. There are many types of machines, equipment, and items that need to be guarded. Some of these include tail and head pulleys, drive and other rotating shafts, V-belts and pulleys, which must be protected not only from people getting into them, but also from the belts breaking and flying off. This will include belts over the 7-foot height limit. Conveyors, overhead hazards and take-up pulleys, flywheels, mobile equipment engines, return rollers, chains and sprockets, and flying materials. Many different types of guards may be used to protect personnel from machinery. You will need to evaluate the potential hazards and determine the best guard for the situation. A point of contact guard prevents a person from contacting a moving piece of equipment by covering that machinery with a fixed and solid guard. This is the most common type of guard you will see out in the workplace. These guards must be fixed where they are not able to be moved at all while the equipment is operational or adjustable to allow different types of material to be worked with similar to a saw. Permanent solid guards are the preferred method of guarding machinery. Guarding by location involves having the equipment stationed in a position where a person is never going to be able to reach the equipment. Anything that is over 7 feet in the air is considered guarding by location. Conveyors pose a special problem in that it can be very expensive to guard long conveyors. Instead, emergency stop cords may be used. These cords must be installed wherever a person can be near a conveyor and positioned so if a person falls into the conveyor, they can pull the stop cord to shut off the equipment. Guards must be designed and built to completely protect employees working around them. This means guarding all sides, top, and bottom. A good rule of thumb is to look at a guard, and if someone trips and sticks a body part out to protect their fall, is there any chance of it getting into the equipment? The guards need to be built out of strong materials. Metal, expanded metal, and plastic are very common materials used for guards. The guards must be substantial enough to withstand vibration, shock, and wear for normal operations. If the guards need materials such as sand and rocks to be able to fall through them, the openings must be large enough to allow this, but small enough to prevent a body part from getting through it. Also, the guard should not be a hazard in itself. For instance, the edges should not be sharp or jagged. The insulation of the guard is also very important. The guard must be securely attached with bolts or pins and not be able to come off during normal operations. Adjustments to the equipment must be able to be performed while the guard is in place. Grease fittings and tension adjusters should extend out of the guard. The guard should also not interfere with normal operations of the equipment. Finally, the guard should also be recognizable as a guard. Painting it yellow or red allows employees to know to leave it alone during operations. If the guard ever needs to be removed for maintenance, it must be designed to be easy to handle. In the end, a well-designed and built guard will work longer and better. Occasionally, we'll need to work on the equipment in the areas behind the guards. In these situations, the equipment must be shut off and locked out. Each person working on the equipment must attach their lock to the lockout. See the lockout procedures on how to do this. If the guard must be removed for testing and adjustments after the work, there are very specific procedures on how to do this. See your supervisor before this is ever done. Before the equipment is put back into service, the guards have to be in place. Guarding is not only for large equipment, but hand tools also. Grinders, saws, and other tools are required to have guards on them. At no time can a tool that comes with a guard be used with the guard removed. Guards get used and worn, and we need to perform regular inspections on them. Guards such as stop cords must be tested regularly. If we find a guard that needs repair or is not working, it must be reported immediately 
and the equipment it is on must not be operated until the guard is repaired. Also make sure to document these inspections. Guarding is a very crucial part of our equipment and how Old Castle Materials protects our employees. Ensure we have good, solid guarding in place, it is functional, and the guards are in good repair. Mm -hmm.